we can't breed in all time. During monsoon season only they can breed. So for them we are making the uh, pro propagate condi conditions in order to make them to breed. Okay, I'm going to can also remove unviable seeds. So, you see like the line spain decline as a result we are facing today a problem and in future we see food scarcity will be a worse issue will, that will hit the whole world. And to tackle such issue, uh, we have to see what will be the solution. I think the fisheries here can play a great role and in fact our aquaculture, the making interventions in the use of breeding can be a great help to meet the demand of the rising uh, demand of the fishes. Secondly, naturally we can also produce a seed. Earlier we see that earlier it was happening that we all only collect the free from seed from the wild sites, especially from the barn regions where the students of fisheries are quite aware of this. We collect the seeds from the dry burns, wet burns, mostly in the West Bengal states like where West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, but this is not enough. The natural uh, collecting the seed from the natural sites will not uh, make us uh, to meet the demand of uh, the seed of uh, fish, seed or even the fish. So it's important to rely on the other source like induced breeding in the fish. Also, also collecting the seed from the natural sources often get mixed with the other other stocks. That's, there's a mixing of, not only a, a mixing of other fish, suppose we have to get a stock of common carp seed, but it often get mixed with some predaceous fishes, and in that state we are not able to identify, because it's big, it's big issue, big, big problem to identify a fish in its juvenile stage, and they are almost same at the fry stage, juvenile stage. And also collecting the fish from the transport, uh, the collection site and transport it to the, uh, the site of aquaculture requires money and even it also leads to the too much of mortality. That's why we, uh, we need to do the inducer breeding because of getting the good quality seeds, saving our money, all this. This might be a reason I think uh, that why we rely now more on the inducer breeding. Now, let's also my topic, uh, one of my topic is that how reproduction is being controlled in every living creature, even it's in the fishes, it's under the control of the endocrine system. Can you tell me, define, can you define simply what is endocrine system? Because you all might have heard in your 12th, 11th classes, even 8th, 10th classes. Yeah. Repeat, man. Uh, simply, do you know what's the endocrine system? So that I make it may, I will make you understand about Okay, no issues. Endocrine system actually I will say it's a sensing and signaling system. Whenever uh, we uh, for example fish is an aquatic organism and is surrounded by the waters, whatever change that happens in the environment it's been, suppose, uh, fish has to breed, and for breeding, it's important that environmental factors are acting as stimuli for the breeding of the fish. And when, when in the environment or the surrounding, it forms the change in or manipula manipulation in such environmental factors, like environmental factors, we say, photo period, there's a rainfall change, temperature change, anything that acts as a precursor for the fish to spawn. They are very important. Fish uh, perceives them, the brain of the fish perceives them and transmits such message or signal this to the hypothalamus and in turn uh, breeding happens in the fish naturally. And I may, I may a flow chart to make you people uh, understand about it's actually the brain hypothalamus pituitary at the gonadal axis that's working on the reproduction in fishes. Well, different environmental stimuli are, uh, are sensed by the brain. The brain in turn uh, sends this message to the hypothalamus through neural connections. Neural hypothalamus sends this message to the pituitary through releasing hormones. And what are the releasing hormones? Those hormones that uh, stimulate. Uh, can you name them? GNRHs. GNRHs. 
gonadotropin releasing hormones are being secreted by the hypothalamus and the releasing hormone in turn uh, act on or stimulate the pituitary to release what hormones like gonadotropin hormones that are very important hormones that uh, their target is the gonad to stimulate they target the gonad to stimulate the hormones called the sex hormones or we say the steroids and the steroids and whatever steroids have been formed like progesterone esteroids that they have the final role in the oocyte maturation and the ovulation that do the spawning final oocyte maturation in spawning in the fish. I think you might understand what is happening in the fish in the brain system. So this is but coming to the history of inducer breeding in the fishes, uh, it was the Jose of Argentina that has suggested that we can induce the breeding in the fishes. Then it was the Brazil was a, a, a country that first was, success, was successful in induce, uh, induce breeding the fish. Then in India, it was the Hamid Khan in 1937 who has made the attempt in breeding the fish. Later on, the Chaudhary and Alcuni breeded many uh, IMCs. Now, now there are two, um, there are mainly two types of inducing agents which can induce the breeding in fish. First is the natural one and second the synthetic one. In natural one we are using the pituitary gland or a pituitary extract. And the second one we are using different drugs like uh, GnRHs, their analogs, LH, uh, LH uh, gonadotropins and different drugs that is helping us uh, breeding, uh, breeding the fish. Pituitary extract, uh, we are collecting it from where? Fish itself. Itself from the fish which we are to inject? Other fish. Donor fish. Donor fish. Donor other fish. Other we fish. call them as donor uh, fish. And in India, the most, the universal donor is the common uh, car. We donate the, uh, we uh, incise the head of the fish, we remove the pituitary gland, then we make a preparation and get extract of it, and then we inject it to the other fish, which, and mostly we do it in bed which season. Uh, just prior to the spawning of the fish, uh, well, it's mostly the fish is about to ripe. Drugs? The drugs like steroids, progesterone, estradiol, deoxycorticosterone, acetate, there are different drugs. Uh, the, the different drugs like overtype with a different trade name, overprim, bovac. The simple composition is like they are made of uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs, but they differ only in the anterior dopamine antagonist. Yes? Yes. 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 Yeah, we are doing that. Yes. And this is uh, the similar, the composition of all these products, Overdyed, Overprim, there are different uh, uh, di different products, this uh, composition is simple, but they are different only in the dopamine intercons in all these is different. Well, these are different synthetic hormones that we are using, GnRH, analogs, and already told that. Now, before starting a spawning of the fish, the most important point need, the, that we need to consider that is the brood stock. We should maintain a healthy brood stock, the sexually mature and a healthy brood stock is the first and foremost thing that we need to take into consideration. And how do we get it, the brood stock? Simply from the natural water bodies or from the farm itself. How we can select the brooders, breeder? Male, we generally choose it when they uh, choose it. Sorry, uh, when the milk has been oozing from that male, and the female we uh, select it by because its uh, belly portion is somewhat uh, soft, bulged, and the ventral region is something like orange, red color. We select that and we inject the fish, and the fish start to spawn up over the night. After the night, the fish we can strip the fish. What? Weight, 
mostly in our in common class, we see that the uh, that the fish is one kg, two kg. It uh, depends upon the fish that it releases a good number of spawns, so a good a good number of egg release. So it is directly Not directly, up to some extent. Because at certain after certain age, there occurs a salinity in fish, which can't grow more. There's a stop of all the physiological process. It's just surviving there in the water body. But that's a diagram you, that you make understood that it's a male where a drop of milk is being oozing from that during the spawning season, and in the female, you see the this a bulged abdomen, uh, it, and the the band region is actually it's not uh, the it's colored red orange color, huh? Mm -hmm. so, how we well, we know it by the term sexual dimorphism. Actually, in each species, there are certain differences that often uh, that happens in the fish during the breeding season. But it's not I important that I, I'm a common farmer. I'm a male or a farmer. Okay. How can I differentiate male and female? Female, which type of fish? Class uh, of yeah. And mostly common cubs, we see that there are a thin portion that is a rough one in males, and in the females, there's soft. In which, in which common Males. Males. In almost all the cubs. In females, usually, we have the belly portion is bulged. And in the male, that is mostly cylindrical and uh, size is somewhat bit small than the female in comparison. Uh, this is the work of my PhD. Uh, I've taken certain, certain slides from that. Uh, we have collected the common carp brooders from the water body Ital Lake, and then we reared them for a period of six months in the Shama fish form. Then after that, we then uh, we then reared them for a period of six months. Then after six months, we acclimatization in the holding tank for six to seven days. And after acclimatization, we then enrich them under the concubate flow of the water. Well, after that, brooders were injected. This is the photograph that I taken during my PhD work. Oh, this is the stripping we have done after that, after the injection. We just collected the uh, female ova from the fish coming up from the vents. And the milk, the white one, we are mixing it with the eggs. Then after we are performing the fertilization in the bowl, we are using feather, feather of the bird to uh, fertilize it. And after the fertilization, after 45 minutes almost, the eggs are being fertilized. Then we then transfer them, transfer it to the rectangular uh, hatching trays. And after that, a continuous flow of the water is maintained, so proper oxygenation will be there. This is the, then after the fertilization, we then put them in the different trays and the constant flow of the water was maintained. And these different hatchlings that were formed. And the, we get with the spawn. Then after that, this part is just ready for stocking in the pond, like nursery. And then after we raise them, they're rearing. And till that, till uh, they get uh, uh, reach out to the market. Now, I see, because it, the program was based on that. Business venture, I hope that you might have drawn your attention, uh, motivated yourself now to see fisheries as a business venture. I, uh, I think that it's a unique opportunity for all of us and all of you, the entrepreneurs, to meet the increasing demand of the food. I believe that before starting any venture, just take into consideration the sustainability because it's a great, not only that uh, will help in our fishes, but it's a core of your uh, business uh, for success also because responsible fishing practice not only ensure the long-term viability in the industry but also preserve the delicate balance of the aquatic ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Ishwan Mohammad for such uh, elaborate and detailed explanation of fish breeding uh, especially with regard to simple uh, layman language to our trainees so that they can understand how we can uh, uh, go through induced breeding in case of fishes and how can we inject and how can we proceed for stripping in fishes. Uh, thank you for the healthy interaction with our uh, trainees, especially Ishfaq, um, Muhammad Bhatt. I guess I am uh, taking accurate uh, nomenclature of your name. 
So, um, thank you so much, all of you, for patient listening to our uh, uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Ishan Mohammed. Thank you all.